In this presentation, we will add employees to our QuickBooks system. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We're going to continue with our more complex system. So if we go into our files and our QuickBooks data, our QuickBooks data files, then we want to pick the QuickBooks 3. We're going to click the, the more complex system to set up the payroll. And there should be a backup file to go through this process if you would like as well. I'm going to double click on the QuickBooks file and open this one up. We're currently in the home page. We have the open windows open. The way to open the open windows is the view drop down and open windows list. We have set up the manual payroll prior to this. Here is the manual payroll options. Now that that is set up, we're going to add employees. One way to do this is to go to the employee center. We can go here to the employee center or to the employee center drop down, which I employees drop down, which I tend to prefer. And then the employee center. Now we had those two checks. We know who they are that we had um, Adam Hamilton and Erica. We're going to add those two employees to our system now as employees we included them before as basically a vendor and we we could try to go in there and delete the vendor and add the employee as an employee but we need them in the system as an employee in order to process payroll if we were to go through that format in processing payroll in quickbooks so i'm just going to add the new employee here we'll add these two people fairly quickly all we're going to do is the bare minimum information the personal information to, to process the payroll and see what that would look like. This information would be found typically in a U.S. company from the W-4 form, which is where we would get the basic kind of information from the employees. So it's, and that could be found on the IRS website, uh, irs.gov, irs.gov. So it's Adam Hamilton. We're going to say the social security number. I'm just making one up, of course, would look something like this on the social security number. We'll put in gender, date of birth is typically necessary for year-end uh, documentation processing. Marital status we have to have uh, in order to process the withholdings properly, typically. Now, we would have to have it, in other words, if we were letting QuickBooks process the withholdings properly. We're going to do it manually, so we would still need that information in order to do that manually. And that's for federal income tax. We're going to say that citizen, yes. Uh, we're going to say ethnicity is not required. This is not required. And so that's all that we're going to put for this field. Now, obviously, if we, if we go to these tabs on the left, the next is the address and content. We would clearly want the address here and any more content necessary. The address would be necessary if we were to make the year-end forms, the W-2s and the W-3s. I'm not going to populate that in, in this format just so we can push forward and work through this. This information wouldn't be necessary down here to pop process payroll forms. However, uh, it's information that would be good and we can add as we go. Next, we're going to go to the actual calculations down here to the payroll information. So this is the kind of part that's probably a little bit more unusual or the part that's different than just entering normal kind of data into a database system for an individual. So we've got the payroll schedule. We've got the bi-weekly. This is how often we pay, either daily, weekly, typical, or bi-weekly. Semi-monthly, monthly would be the more typical items. We're going to say monthly here. So if we had a small client that just pays monthly, then this might be something that we could set up. I wouldn't do it manually again, but through the, through the QuickBooks system so that we can help them calculate uh, the payroll withholding with the help of QuickBooks calculations on it. Although, again, if you're going to pay for that, it might be worthwhile to, to pay for a third party to take on that responsibility. So then we're going to say that the item name is going to be salary because it's a salary uh, employee that we're going to have, meaning they get paid the same each time period. And again, this would be an easier thing to do a lot of times if they were some type of salary because then the withholdings would be steady. We wouldn't have variations as much, which would be easier to, to handle. So we're going to set up the employee. Uh, it's going to be wages hourly. We're, it's not. It's not hourly. We're looking for. We're looking for salary. So we're looking for. We'll say annual salary, and then next, and then it's going to be regular pay. That's what we want. Next, salaries. The enter the name for the salary item. This is going to be the item list. That's. We'll just keep that. We we'll, won't we'll go into that. 
Payroll, this is the expense account that will be hit with this item. So that's what we want. And finish. And then we're going to say that they get paid 55000 a year, which means they're going to be paid monthly. Then once we process payroll, it should be 55000 divided by 12. They should get this much per month. With the taxes then, we're going to go up to taxes up top. Taxes. And we're, we need marital status, so single. And we're going to say that uh, allowances are one. That's going to be on the W-4 as well. We'll have to fill out the W-4 for that. Extra withholdings will be on the W-4 as well. They're subject to, if they're U.S., uh, the Medicare, the Social Security, and federal uh, unemployment tax. Those are typically what we have to calculate here. So we're going to keep those items. If they're subject to the state, we would go to the state as well, depending on the state that they're in. Similar type of, of screen. I'm not going to go into the state now. We'll keep it as just the Fed. Uh, depends on which states we're in as to whether we have additional state payroll taxes in the U.S. So then we're just going to say OK. And, and it says the state is not completed. I'm going to say continue, please. And then we're going to say OK. And it says that do you wish to set up payroll information other local? I'm going to leave it as is because we're just going to keep it simple with the Fed calculations uh, and the, it says it's this is already used in the vendor and that's because when we entered the check we entered the check as a vendor as we took it from the check register now if this was a new employee uh, we wouldn't have a check written for him we would be setting up a new employee that wouldn't be a problem but when we set up the employee we have to differentiate a, a employee from the vendor and we set up the check as a vendor we can do that by just hitting a space bar so they're saying hit the space bar and that'll be enough of a verification or differentiation. So we're going to say, OK. Uh, do you wish to, to set up payroll information? We're going to say leave as is. And I'm actually just going to try putting a period after the last name. They want to have curly brackets, but I'm going to try just putting a period to differentiate the name and say, OK. And then leave as is. All right, there we have it. Okay, so the next one we're going to set up is for Erica. It'll be the same process. We'll go for new employee. And we're going to say the first name is Erica. Last name is Robertson. Social Security, we're going to say 545545544. Something like that. <laughs> and then it's going to be gender, female, date of birth. We're going to say 123179. Uh, we're just making these, these dates up, obviously. So... Marital status, we're going to say married. That's important for the federal income tax withholding. U.S. citizen, we should say yes. And we don't really need the ethnicity. That would be optional, so we're good there. So here is our information. We could then go to the address field tab on the, on the left. Enter the address. We're not going to do that here, but clearly the address would be needed for the W-2s and the W-3 information. And then we're going to go to the additional information and then go to the payroll information. Now, we're going to go back to monthly here. So we're going to drop down and say we want monthly pay. And this one we're going to set up as hourly. So this is an hourly as the item. We pay this person hourly. Erica gets paid hourly. Tab. We're going to set up that item. It's going to be hourly wages. That's what we want. Next. Regular pay. That's what we want. Next. Hourly. That's what we want. Next. And it's going to go to payroll expense when we process. That's what we want. So we'll say finish. And I'm not going to put the rate now. We'll decide that uh, later when we process payroll. Then we'll go to taxes up top. So that we went here, taxes. And then we're in the federal taxes. We're going to say she's married. That's important for federal taxes. Withholdings, three. This would be on the W-4 form. And then extra withholdings, none. That would be on W-4 form, four form. And then Medicare, Social Security, unemployment that's to keep the same we're not going to enter any state information we're going to say okay i'll give you a little bit of time but here's the information we'll say okay and then we're going to say continue and then i'm going to go back up to the personal data and i'm going to add a period behind the n so that they will allow me to process this and differentiate it between the vendor and then say okay leave as is Okay, so those are, are going to be our two employees. So in this system, then we would the client would say, hey, could you set up these two employees and help me to calculate the payroll? 
we can then calculate the payroll and note, see what the net check is and give them the information they need to provide for the pay stub if we use the, the payroll system in this format. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.